Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, our Oracle Molassi's prophecies began to come true. She spoke about finding the strength of the sun before our tribe makes their first voyage over to the mountains, and find them they did. They can already tell thanks to his striking golden fur and that big body of his, he is definitely the strength of the sun that she was looking for. But I think it's quite interesting. Despite seeing all of these vague visions of him for so long now, Molassi wasn't expecting him to be quite so striking. I feel like she has noticed a little bit of a flutter whenever she glances his way, and I'm wondering if perhaps they might consider starting a family together in the future. Maybe once they lead him back to their home, maybe they could even settle down at the very same nest that she found when she discovered Kurovan. Oh, and speaking of poor little Kurovan, he's the one who's been infected by a leech, and he's panicking at the moment because he's a little bit worried that he's not going to be able to take his message over to Beowulf. Beowulf's family just passed away, so he needs to find a place to bury them. He was taught by Molassi how to set those souls to rest. But if he passes away too, then who's going to take up his job? So that leech has him very, very concerned because I do believe that our tribe actually saw some of the piranha fish lurking around these ports, as they usually tend to do. So he's not sure if he should make a mad dash down the shore to see if anybody can help him out there, or if he should turn around and risk not setting these souls to rest in time. Risk them being trapped on the island, just like his mother Sila. Unfortunately, not many of his tribe mates have taken notice. I feel like Sand Dragon is probably a little bit too distracted with all of these coconuts to really do too much to help him. And of course, Petal Tail too. He's probably being told off by his brother, actually. I can see Sand Dragon being like, you really need to go find your own berry bush, Petal Tail. You're one of the few with those poison fangs, so why aren't you making yourself useful? He's so dedicated to keeping our stores full, I can see him being very, very hard on his brother too. But I think one of the creatures who would notice his struggles, despite being so far away, is one of our royal babies himself. Tafanku is very soft and quiet. He's a very timid creature. At least it seems that way, just like his father Meadowhawk. But with his purse now, he would also make a very excellent healer. And he's already proven himself to be pretty useful by purring those soothing sounds to Meadowhawk, making sure that he isn't too scared out here all alone. So since he can move so far, he's very, very nimble with that lean body of his. I wonder if he would be the one to jump to Kurofan's aid. Maybe since he's the only one who's noticed, we'll have him dash across the tide pools. He can jump all the way to the shore and maybe push Kurofan into the nest. Not only to allow him to rest, but also to make it so those piranhas won't notice him once he does start to bleed on the next day. So Kurovan should be safe, and we should be able to have Tavan Ku pick that leech off of him before his journey truly begins. It does mean that his journey is going to take one extra day, but I feel like he would be grateful for the help. He's actually his nephew too, and thanks to those dark masks that they're both wearing, they actually look kind of similar, don't they? Tavan Ku's is just so, so unique though. One of you mentioned that you think it might be the panda patterns in a very small state. We have some very thin density, and we also have the small pattern on this baby. So I wonder if we could truly coax the panda patterns out of him? It's something that we'll have to consider for the future for sure. Now Petal Tail, where are we going to find you that berry bush that your brother so wants you to collect from? I mean, honestly, I wonder if he would be a little bit startled by Tavanku rushing by. Maybe he would want to investigate too, but he's using this as his excuse. He actually wants to do a little bit more adventuring. He feels like that would be far more fun. So as he sneaks around his older brother, he'll tell him that he's just looking for those poison berries, of course. But truly, he wants to tag along in their shadow, just to see what they're getting up to. Now, unfortunately, that leaves you here alone, Meadowhawk, and I'm sure you are quite frightened with the bluebirds lurking overhead. I guess we'll settle you down on the nest for now. That way you can keep clearing out those grasses. But your mate will be back soon, don't worry. She promised that she would be back after all. Oh, and with all these piranha lurking here? Oh my goodness, Sairi. Do you think she'd be brave enough to cross the tide pools? Honestly, I think she would. 
If she's coming out here to find some resources for her babies, no little piranhas are going to stop her. She sees that coconut tree in the distance, and she probably figures this would be the best place to look first. So she'll pick up those coconuts on the next turn, and that means that she's sending Sunslash off with Molassi. We'll have her lead him back to the rest of the tribe. I suppose we would probably want Damselfly to stay behind, though, as protection, I guess, for her leader. She is kind of like our little warrior in the situation, despite the fact that she is so very young. But I think she's also noticed that this creature over here, Treasure, is a little bit infected by the sleeping sickness. She's not sure what that means, she's never experienced that before, but she is rather worried because he hasn't budged ever since they arrived on the shore. I feel like the death of his father is really starting to catch up with him. He's realized as his brother insists that they leave, that they're going to have to leave Spook's home behind too. Treasure probably feels like this should be his. He wanted so desperately to continue his carefree lifestyle, of course. But Spook is a bit of an elusive creature. He was gone so often, having his adventures, that very few of our tribe mates knew of his existence. He's probably not sure how to honor a memory that nobody actually remembers. Maybe he's even wondering if he's going to suffer from the same fate too. So it's going to be up to little damselfly to find a way to cheer him up and hopefully bring him back from Mulberry's misfortune. Now, Malassi, you are actually quite a bit faster than Sunslash, so you're going to have to wait here for him. I wonder if we should actually take him into the water instead. We don't want him to settle down underneath the coconut tree, but he is very, very slow on land thanks to those little frog toes. I wonder if she would find that endearing. Like, I can see him being very clumsy when he's hopping on the beaches. He probably flopped into the water just to make less of a fool of himself, in fact. Now the last creature we have to move is our newest. Beowulf just found Nuvon off in the grasses. Scruffy little Nuvon, look at his beard. His mask is literally perfect. It looks like he's wearing a beard since it blends in with his mane. I feel like his story is a bit more of a sad one, however. Since he was out here all alone, and since he is still quite young, I wonder if perhaps the Baryinas got to his family. Maybe he wasn't strong enough to defend his family from them, and they all succumbed to the Baryina's power. And I wonder if perhaps he had mistaken Beowulf for a Baryina too. He was rather skittish when we first met him, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. He may have even followed the very same pathway of roots. Oh, but it looks like they're all gone. Oh no! Oh, we are going to have Kurovan use those to set his parents' souls to rest? Oh, Beowulf, this might be a problem for you. You guys might have to sniff out some more roots. But for now, he's just concerned about getting Nuvan to safety, so we'll have him push him toward the pathway that he made. You could even do us a favor and clear out a little bit more of this path too. That way we know that the other creatures will be able to find you. But yeah, I wonder if after seeing his great strength, Beowulf with his six in strength. Oh, that's much, much better than Nuvan. Maybe Nuvan wants him to train him in a way. He wants to become just as strong as Beowulf, Anamim's champion. That way he can avenge his fallen family. I think we should be all out of turns, though. Aside from you, little damselfly, but I think you're just going to stay right there. She doesn't have very much else that she can do until the Perinas start to spawn again, of course. Oh, and the bugs are coming out again. Oh no, Treasure. Did they actually infect you again? Well, he does have a one little point of energy to use. I feel like he would be very likely to try to swipe up those berries. Since he's so connected to his father, he probably just wants to honor his memory one last time by grabbing those. But instead, let's have Damselfly drag him away. Neither of them have the stinky tail, so they can't really scare the bug swarm away so we're just going to have to run instead. Oh, you could bring him over to this berry bush? He's been here before, but at least it's farther away from those bugs, so he should be able to heal a bit more easily. If only you had some fish that you could gather up. I'm sure that he would enjoy that as a snack too. But before we go any further with you, 
Let's make sure that we heal you, poor little Kurovan. Bleeding, with the leeches attached to him. You have had quite the day, my poor little friend. He's still quite worried about doing his job right, though, so I could see him trying to make his way down the shore. But Tavanku would push him right back into that nest and pull that leech straight off of him. Now, unfortunately, that means that he's still bleeding. But since we have Petaltail nosing around the area anyways, why don't we bring him up here so he can lick his wounds? I guess Tavanku is going to be in your debt? Or both of them are, to be honest. Kurovan would probably feel that even more. He's going to feel like it's his job now, on top of the Gravedigger's role, of course, just to make sure that these kids are kept safe. So, now you should be able to start making your way down the shore without worrying about all of those piranhas. Oh, and there's our fish. It looks like they're over here on this side of the island. Well, I don't want you getting too far away from the kids, but since we know that Tavanku can move pretty far anyways, let's bring him up here. That way he can reveal all of those poison berry bushes. You know, this is what Petaltail was hoping to find anyway, technically, just to keep his brother happy. So he'll be very glad to see that you've pointed these out for him. And now you're finally back with Beowulf too. And just in time, because it looks like those bugs are out here as well. And this is kind of what Kurovan wanted to protect him from. So for now, let's bring them all together. That way they can regroup, I suppose. Oh, you've revealed another one of the puddles? Gosh, Nuvan, you're pretty good at sniffing out Mulberry's misfortune. That must be because of his background. Maybe the curse follows him too. But at least that gives Kurovan a good opportunity to tell Beowulf about his parents and to let him know that he's going to try his best to set those remains to rest. That way they won't be trapped like the rest of our families. Oh, it looks like Sila may have gone away. Oh, she's disappeared for the time being. Our bluebirds are no longer in our skies. I wonder what she's getting up to then. I'm sure she'll be back soon. She hasn't disappeared entirely. Oh my gosh, there's shells down here. Sairi, you're actually missing out in your own home. But since she is following the bandit's ways, she would definitely be much more interested in these meals. It's kind of unfortunate because there's not really a good way to pick these up, especially since she doesn't have the water body. I don't know, maybe it's time for you to return then, Sairi. At least you found that one coconut for your baby. Granted, your baby is not even going to be at the nest anymore, once you two finally do reunite. I can't see him taking the journey with Kurovan, though. I feel like he would probably want to come back to the nest anyways, so I'm sure those two are going to see each other again very soon. Now, Sunslash. Let's see if you can make your way around all of these coconuts, of course. We'll hop over here, and then straight through the tide pools, so you can see all of those water-breathing plants yourself. He actually wanted to gobble some of these up so he could go fishing for his tribe, and I think he is definitely appreciating his decision to go with Malazi now. Not only is she absolutely beautiful, with those glowing antennas of hers, but this opens up a brand new opportunity for him too. Now, while she could go straight back to the nest to relax, maybe see if she could work on any more visions in her prophecy, I feel like she's a little bit too attached to Sunslash at this point, so she's going to stay right here. Maybe she'll try her best to help Sand Dragon out with his job? Well, there we go. She managed to pick up one of those coconuts for you, Sand Dragon. Now, would he be happy, or would he be a little bit upset that she picked up his food instead? I mean, he must be happy for the help. He's kind of been single-handedly feeding our tribe at this point. And with the berry bushes running so low... Do we have a rainfall in our future? That would be excellent. Oh no, in one day the weather is going to be sunny? Well, that's not very much of a help, Malasi. Maybe we'll see if that changes tomorrow then, as soon as we skip the day. Well, Meadowhawk, I guess you could come down here for now and try to pick up this coconut too. Since she had so much luck, he was probably hoping he would be the same. But unfortunately, it's not to be. I wonder if he's getting antsy then. He's probably really hoping that Sairi is going to return with fistfuls of food. But it seems like she's going to have to take a different voyage if she truly wants to increase their stores. Now all we should have left is you, Damselfly. And I'm not really sure if we're going to find a better place for you to be. I suppose for now we could just have her come over here and purr, that way she could try to heal treasure of his sickness. 
it doesn't quite work the same as injuries, of course, but I feel like she would try anything at this point. It's good to see that she's completely healed too, thanks to Sairi's purring from before, so I wouldn't be surprised if that played a little role in what she did just now. Let's bring her over here too, maybe trying to coax treasure a little bit further away from this place, and then we should be ready to skip the day once again. So we'll zoom out this time again, just to make sure that the Baryinas don't come after our tribe. Everybody looks safe and sound right now. No Baryinas in the dark, but the bugs are still following very, very close behind you guys. They're probably still trying to get to you, Nuvan. Well, at least we have poison berries to collect. Oh, and the root! Yes! The root came back for you, Kurovan! Go ahead and dig that up so you can set one of his parents to rest, and then pick up all of those poison berries too. We'll bring Petal Tail up right behind you. Oh, the poor guy is so slow thanks to his Baryina Claw. I'm sure that's something that you could bond with over Beowulf. He might be a little bit faster thanks to his lean body, but he has two Baryina Claws, so you know he's a little bit clumsy. Now, you should be able to protect them from Mulberry's misfortune too but I feel like Beowulf is probably going to start taking Nuvan down the shore. We found a nest over here too. Did we find that before? I'm not sure if we actually did. And they found some delicious fish to scoop up too. There we go. You guys managed to catch every last morsel. I'm sure that was probably some sort of like training regimen, catching the fish in the water because they can be pretty tricky. So if he wants to be strong enough to take down a Baryina himself, Catching fish must be a great way to start. Now, Sunslash, I think it might be finally time for you to settle down next to Malasi. We'll bring them up here, and then maybe we can take a closer look at their mutation menus. I actually have something a little bit more unique in mind for them, for our Oracle line. I'm hoping that we'll be able to keep the antennas on them, of course. We'll definitely want to make sure that we place the antennas into one of Sunslash's slots. But then for the rest of their genetics, since we do want to get rid of the big ears that Sunslash has, I was wondering if we could instead weasel the Baryina ears onto their babies. It's kind of like the normal ears, it's the same amount of hearing at least, so there won't be any change there. But it doesn't take away from their cold resistance, so the Baryina eared creatures should be able to survive much more easily in the mountains. So we'll give Malasi the Baryina ears into her for a slot and we'll cross our fingers that we're lucky enough to see them on their babies. And then as for Sunslash, the second slot should probably go toward the normal hind legs. We don't want his babies being cursed with the same situation as he is. Now I think Molossi's fertility is a little bit low. I guess that's the only other thing that I would want to make sure doesn't get passed to their babies. So we'll give her the high fertility too. And then we can have Sunslash breed with her we can have her settle down in that very same nest that she found all those days ago when she first joined our tribe. I feel like that's very fitting. This is a pretty good place for her to raise her little oracle babies anyways. So Tavanku knows that new life is just about to blossom in the tribe. That's a good message for him to take back to his father. As he picks the last of those poison berries, tries his best to crack open the coconuts. Oh, that time you were successful. Maybe you're going to have more food here than your mate even brings back. Oh, and I just noticed. Oh, treasure, you have all of your energy back? Oh, how fitting. I wonder if Damselfly's purring actually worked on him then? Well, that's quite sweet. So go ahead and grab up the last of your poison berries, and then we'll have you scoot down the shore, through the tide pool, so you can follow Damselfly at last. I'm sure that Sairi is quite impressed. The more able bodies they have around the tribe, the better. And for that matter, I feel like he would still fit the description of one of the creatures of the sun. He has that same golden glowing fur as his big brother, and while he might not be quite as strong as Sunslash, maybe he could start a different branch of the family once we do get to the mountain too. So come on over here, you can finally reunite with your family. And I think on the next turn, we'll have Sairi have another baby with Meadowhawk. That could be an interesting way for them to continue their family, I guess. Every time she returns from a voyage, they can have a brand new little baby in the nest. We don't want Damselfly getting too far away from Treasure, 
We could actually bring her over here to search for some fish, maybe? Fortunately, it looks like the oceans are bare. You know, I wonder if she would want to go swimming with him? Maybe she could munch on one of these water-breathing plants, too, and they could dive into the ocean together. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Now, Sand Dragon just has a couple of coconuts to gather up. We'll bring him over here for this one, too. And then I think we should be ready to see our very first oracle of the tribe. Or at least the very first oracle born inside our tribe. Fingers crossed, as long as they have those antennas. Oh. Oh, no antennas, but the Baryena ears. Oh my gosh, how precious do they look on this little baby. Oh, he looks like a little sun drop. He is so, so cute. I love the Baryana ears on that big nose. That is too much. He almost looks like a little lion, maybe? Well, he might not have your powers, Malasi, but he is still going to be a very, very excellent addition to the mountains. With his big body, he should be able to keep warm. And he even has the home island gene, too. So we know that he's going to be able to protect that part of Adam's legacy. So as for his name, let's call this little baby Daybreak. Something to go along with the sunny theme of his father, of course, and of the prophecy in general. But I feel like that's quite fitting because he looks like he's going to be pretty strong too. Oh, Daybreak, you are gorgeous. What a beautiful baby. I feel like we do have to have another baby now, though. Let's bring Sunslash over here. We want to make sure that she has at least one oracle baby before she passes away. So we'll have her build another nest right next to her little one. And she can clear out more of that area, so hopefully he has room to play. Now, Petaltail, it's going to be your job to pick up where Kurovan left off. Go ahead and grab those poison berries too. He's not quite as good at collecting as Kurovan is, but I'll give it his best try until he gets bored. Now I think we'll want to make sure that Beowulf at least marks off this nest. He knows that somebody would definitely be able to put it to good use. And then it's time for you guys to go chalk down your Bergenas again. I feel like the farther we bring them from the rest of the tribe, the more likely the Bergenas are to spawn. I'm not sure if that's true, but every time we isolate one of our creatures, it seems like that's when the Baryenas tend to tumble out from the darkness. I guess it's because they have such a wider area to spawn in, as opposed to out here, where everything is pretty much lit up. Oh no, treasure! Oh, Mulberry's misfortune is trying to follow you! Quick, scoot up here next to your friend! She has plans anyway. So as she gobbles up that water-breathing plant, you'll be very, very surprised to see her flop straight into the ocean. I wonder if you would be a little bit worried at first. Like, what on earth are you doing? You don't have the water body like me. But she's just trying to scout around for some fish for you guys to play with. Or perhaps, more importantly, some fish for you guys to scoop up together. She is veering a little bit far away from her true path as one of the warriors for Sairi. But I guess our bandit queen is a little bit busy right now anyways. She's just about to have another baby with Meadowhawk. I don't know, I feel like she would be considering just abandoning this area. There's really not that much food for them to eat. There has to be a more plentiful location out there somewhere for them to raise their babies before they're ready to leave. I mean, maybe it's just over here? Since we do have so many poison berries in this area, that might be a good place for us to investigate next. She'll take our next voyage down the opposite shore toward those ports instead. At least we know that Sand Dragon always has his coconuts. He's not going to let those go anytime soon. And I guess, Tavanku, for now, all we can really do is have you try your best to crack these open with your father. So that should be the end of our turn again. So let's go ahead and skip the day one last time, just to see if today is going to be a little bit more lucky for our Oracle babies. Oh, yes! Oh, and this time she has the antennas with the Baryena ears. That is exactly what I was hoping for. It is going to make this family look so, so unique. Unfortunately, now she doesn't have the big body, so she won't be as hardy as her brother. But she is still gorgeous. Oh, I can't wait to see her prophecies unfold in the mountains, too. So to go along with our brother, I think we'll name this baby Daylight. And then let's head on over to our new little royal baby in the nest. 
before we end out this episode. Oh. Oh my goodness, what a little shadow you are. Oh, it hardly looks like he has eyes at all. Oh, that is so spooky. The dark eyes always look so terrifying on the purse notes anyways. Oh my gosh, and look at that little sleeve that he has right up his arm. That is adorable. Oh, the mask has just completely taken over his entire body, though. That is so strange. And it's an awfully similar name to his brother. We have Tavan Ku now, and we also have Tavan. That is going to get very, very confusing. Thank you for that, Sairi. I really appreciate it. So the newest era of oracles has finally been born in our tribe. I feel like they definitely deserve their own special gem colors too. And I think at the moment, the only ones we're not using are the pink gem colors. So maybe we'll go back to pink for our oracles. I know that we've used that in the past for other families, but since the pink gems have died off now, I guess it would be the most fitting one for us to pick. Now in the next episode, I guess Sun Slash is going to have to make sure that his babies are prepared for the mountain. He doesn't really know what they're about to face either, but I suppose with Malasi's visions whispering in the back of his mind, he'll be able to come up with some way to train them properly. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!